بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولكم ذس از دكتور علي مقيبل ولكم ان يو تو ترانسفورميشن اوف راندوم فاريبل ان ذس موديول وي هاف كفرد اكسبكتيشن مومنتس فانكشن ذات جيف مومنتس اند اتس ناو تايم تو لوك ات ترانسفورميشن اوف راندوم فاريبلز وي مين باي ترانسفورميشن اوف راندوم فاريبلز وي ار جيفن ان انبوت ديستريبيوشن اكس وي نو اتس بي دي اف اند ات جوز ثرو ترانسفورميشن اور سيستم وي جيت ذا اوتبوت واي ويتش از انذر راندوم فاريبل So, given the input PDF, given the given the input distribution, what would be the output distribution? The process of finding the output distribution is known as transformation of random variables. We will go over three different cases. We'll look at continuous transformation, and then we'll consider two cases where the input is continuous. We'll look at monotonic, increasing or decreasing case. The transformation is monotonic. We'll look at the case where the transformation is not monotonic, and finally we'll, we'll look at the case where the random variable is discrete. So we'll start with the case of y is defined to be as function of x. Y is a transformation of x, and the question in hand is given f of x, given the PDF of the empt. What would be the BDF of the output f of y? We'll start with the first case where we consider the monotonic increasing function. Uh, on the switch here on the right hand side, you can see that we have the x axis and the y axis. The relation between them shown in this line, this is the transformation. We call it monotonic increasing because it just increases, does not go down. It's not going up and down, it's monotone, it's one tone. If it was going up and down, call it multitonic or non-monotonic. So mathematically, we can say a monotonic increasing function. If you increase x, then you expect y also to increase. For example, here, if this is one value of x, x1, another value of x2, which is greater, so x2 is greater than x1, you also expect the output to be ordered in the same way. So the transformation or y2 would always be greater than y1. For this case of monotonic increasing, we have we use the green color. For the lower example, we have the monotonic decreasing function. We have uh, for x2 greater than x1, expect that y2 would be less than y1. So it's not the same. It's going down. Now let's see how to consider the transformation for both cases. We'll start with monotonic increasing exam. Uh, remember the definition of of uh, of the CDF. The CDF of y, okay, it considers all probabilities of being less than a given value y one. I'm using here the purple color for, for the y-axis. So we should consider if this is the y that we are interested in, we should consider all the value that's that's below, the one that's shown in the box here. Everything here is considered. But what we are not given the PDF of y, we're given the PDF of x. So since they are monotonic, if y is less than y naught, then we need just to look at what is the corresponding value of the x-axis. It's now x naught. So finding the probability of y less than y naught is just equal to finding the probability that x is less than x naught. Or this is what we call the CDF of y. So uh, we can map x and y by mapping the point x0 and y0 because we have we have direct monotonic relation we have here the definition of the cdf it's nothing but the integral of the p from minus infinity to to the variable of interest y0 i'm going to change this in terms of x so this is also equivalent to finding the cdf of x but instead we we need to we need to integrate up to x0 here was was nothing but the inverse transform of y0 if you are interested in the pdf not the cdf you can differentiate both sides with respect to uh, y so from the left hand side we get the pdf of y shown here and on the right hand side we differentiate with respect to y so i get the integral will disappear i will get f of x evaluated at s0 but also because we have different differential here, we get dx by dy. We get dx by dy. 
we can write it in a different in uh, we can replace y naught y so we get the pdf of y is equal to the pdf of x times dx by dy the pdf of y equal to the pdf of x times dx by dy we can extend this we can extend what we have seen to the case of monotonic decreasing function so the diagram you see here on the right <coughs> sorry is the monotonic decreasing function and now <coughs> you, you have to be careful here because if you want to consider all values less than a given y then it's going to be x must be great must much greater than or greater than x naught so it's now uh, the complement of x if you like so the cd of y probability of y is than a given value is now mapping to the probability of x is greater than x naught not less than or equal because it's a decreasing function I can also write this as 1 minus the CDF of X. Now we'll do a similar thing to what we have done before. And we can find that uh, the PDF will be, if you differentiate both sides, you'll find that the PDF will be the PDF of X times DX by DY. But we have a minus sign here coming from there. The only difference between multiplying, increasing and decreasing is the minus sign. Remember that the slope in the two cases, one is positive, and here we have negative slope or because of the relation between the two. So we can combine and come up with a general formula. Since one has a minus sign, and in this case, we have a negative slope. So what I can say is that just take the PDF of y equal to the PDF of x times the absolute value of the differential d by dy. Or if you want to write that in the denominator, it will be f of x divided by dy by dx. So we have a fantastic relation that that given the bf of y of x, it will give you the bf of y and vice versa. But you have to have a monotone decreasing or increasing function. So I'll, I'll, I'll save this in a box. And this is something you need to remember to be able to solve the transformation problems. Remember that this is only for the monotonic transformation. It includes increasing and decreasing because we have the absolute value. Now time to do an example. In this example, we're looking at a random, a random, a random variable which is Gaussian. I hope by now that we all remember the Gaussian PDF, but I am reproducing it here for convenience. So it says a new random variable Y is defined as Y Ts equal to ax plus b. Basically, y is scaled version of x plus a constant b. And the question is find the pf of y. We have a linear transformation of a Gaussian random variable, and we want to see what is going to happen to the output. If we use the same formula, it says that the pdf of y is also going to be the same as the pdf of x, just replace the variable with uh, since the relation is y equal to x minus plus b from here we can see here that this relation says that y equal to ax plus b which means that x equal to y minus b over a so we are changing the variable because we want now i cannot i don't use x i want the pdf in terms of y so i'm replacing x in the pdf in terms of y but then we have to scale by the derivative of x with respect to y and if you take the derivative of s with respect to y dx by dy here you get 1 over a and also need the, the absolute value so we have implemented the equation i'm just going to substitute now i, I, I colored this with with blue and this with red so that can you trace how things are going to change in the formula wherever there is x we have changed that to y minus p over a there is one one over a outside so it goes inside if you like you can put it inside the, the square root with square and uh, here we go we, we can rearrange things and we get we get the following transfer function okay which is also gaussian but with difference with different standard deviation or different variance and also different mean so we can conclude that 
a Gaussian random variable when scaled and shifted when linearly transformed you also get a Gaussian random variable the only thing that changes is the mean invariance so linear transformation of Gaussian random variable if you take a linear transformation ax plus b produces another Gaussian random variable so and then the new mean will be ax plus b so it's going to be scaled and shifted but the variance of course is affected by the shift so it's going to be only scaled so it's going to be a squared times sigma x squared so if you want if somebody give you a Gaussian and you want to find the, the output after transformation you need to find the mean and variance and you plug into the general form for the Gaussian formula now there are a few things I'd like you to do first it says a Gaussian voltage x has a mean value x bar equal to 2 and a variance equal to 5 the voltage x is applied to a square law full wave diode detector with transfer with the transfer characteristic y equal to 7x squared find the mean value of output voltage now uh, I'm bringing this question here to show you that first this is not a monotonic transformation okay y equal to x squared is a parabola but we can solve this problem we can find the mean of the output without the need for finding the diff so the thing we learn here unless we are required to I, I don't need to find the output PDF so if you want to find the the mean you just go expect value of y uh, sorry expected value of y equal to expected value of since y is defined to be 7x squared and then you'll find 7 outside the expectation x squared and it's now your job to find what is the expected value of x squared this is not given what is given is variance and the mean so please work things out and uh, write your answer in the section on in the comments we'll see whether we get right or wrong we'll compare our answers together but I gave you a good hint so here's an example of non-monotonic and we have to um, we can solve because we are just asked for the expectation alternatively uh, you need to find the PDF of Y and then find the expectation the second practice says a random variable x undergoes the transformation y equal to minus 3 over x find density function of y in terms of density function of x so this can be treated like uh, this can be treated like a linear non uh, sorry uh, monotonic transformation if you look at the curve if you sketch this signal uh, if you sketch this, this relation between y and x okay you get something like this right and this can be treated as monotonic y I would like you to think so please get this done and write the PDF of x of y in the comment section finally I would like you to demonstrate linear and nonlinear transformation using MATLAB MATLAB is a very handy tool if you are not sure about any of the transformation you can generate the random variable perform the transformation and then get the output uh, PDF and then compare with your answer for example here I'm just sharing with you that uh, I am generating uh, first clearing the memory then generating number of sums here it's 1 million <coughs> sorry for our case uh, here in this example I start with Gaussian random variable you can start with whatever you want and then using histogram I'm converting histogram into PDF so I know the PDF of the input then you have the options of doing linear transformation you can do um, this example for uh, you can do this or even you can do this example you can do whatever transformation you like and then you get just the output PDF from the histogram and then you normalize the histogram we have done this before so you can visit our previous videos and you just plot them before and after the transformation and we compare them and we, of course we can find the mean if you want to solve this problem you can do the y as a new transformation so for example for, for this uh, you can of course comment one of these one two three comment two and keep one and try them all you can kind of base this uh, from, from the slides which are shared in my website and uh, experiment yourself so you might get something like this before and after transformation so we can control we can get as many shapes as we want so this is the result of um, this code at top when this was uncommented all right so now we can proceed